Welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral on this Tuesday during the eighth week in Ordinary Time. To our guests visiting but not attending Mass today, we ask that you please be reverential and respectful of the solemnity of the sacred service while you enjoy your visits. Our celebrant for this Mass is Monsignor Ritchie, Rector of the Cathedral, and the intention of this Mass is for Cardinal Edward Egan. Our entrance hymn is number 785. In your one faith hymnal, all people that on earth do dwell. Number 785. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters, my brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. To keep the law is a great oblation, and he who observes the commandments sacrifices a peace offering. In works of charity, one offers fine flour, and when he gives alms, he presents his sacrifice of praise. To refrain from evil pleases the Lord, and to avoid injustice is an atonement. Appear not before the Lord empty-handed, for all that you offer is in fulfillment of the precepts. The just one's offering enriches the altar and rises as a sweet odor before the Most High. The just one's sacrifice is most pleasing, nor will it ever be forgotten. In a generous spirit, pay homage to the Lord. Be not sparing of free will gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance and pay your tithes in a spirit of joy. Give to the Most High as He has given to you, generously according to your means. For the Lord is one who always repays, and He will give back to you sevenfold. But offer no bribes, these He does not accept. Trust not in sacrifice of the fruits of extortion, for he is a God of justice who knows no favorites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Hear, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. God, your God, am I. 
not for your sacrifice do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice and fulfill your vows to the Most High. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, and to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Peter began to say to Jesus, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in the present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last and the last will be first. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You see this picture of Cardinal Egan here uh, today because today is the anniversary of his death. He died four years ago on, on this very day. Um, let me just tell you how he died. It's a very beautiful story. He was he's retired. He, had, uh, he was in a rectory down on 31st Street, I think it was. And he had his lunch. And at the end of his lunch, he had ice cream. That was the important thing. He, liked his ice cream, so he had his ice cream, and as soon as he finished the ice cream, his, fell, his head fell down and he died. Boom, just like that. If, if you have to go, that's a good way of going. You know? We don't want to go, but the Cardinal didn't suffer at all. Um, he, uh, God took him very quickly. He didn't have to go to hospitals, and, and he had his ice cream, which I think is very important for him. When I was first here, uh, this painting was in the back of the church on this side, and Pope Benedict was on the other side. And the picture of Pope Benedict was not a good one. It was a, an early version of when he first became Pope, and they had gotten much better pictures as time went on. And, and this picture was uh, done, painted, when he was the Bishop of Bridgeport, uh, so he wasn't a cardinal in this one. So I suggested to him in a very nice uh, memo, I said, why don't I replace the two paintings? The one of, of the Holy Father is, is not a good one at all. It's, but the, and yours, of course, is very good, but it's not a cardinal picture. So he writes me back saying, yes, for the Pope that we could replace it, but no for this one. And I said to myself, I wonder why. And then when I looked at it, I realized, because this is a very young Cardinal Egan, way before he was a young one. So he liked this picture over there. So every time I see it, we keep it in the rectory now. And since today was his anniversary, I, I said I, I would put it out and tell you that little story about him. Um, he was the one who, who gave me this job as the rector, so uh, I have great love and, and affection for him, for the, uh, the confidence that he showed in me uh, back, way back in 2006, and I'm, uh, I'm still very grateful 
to Cardinal Egan for his goodness. It's also, again, just for my personal uh, self, it's the day my doggy died uh, six years ago, or seven years ago, I guess it is now, um, on the same day. So the Cardinal and, and my doggy are always remembered on, on, the, six, on the 5th of, uh, of March. We hear today in the, in the Gospel, Jesus talking to the people that had given up stuff for him had left behind their families, had left behind their towns, had, had walked with him uh, through places where they weren't always welcome, who had to uh, endure the, uh, the scoffing and the making fun of the Pharisees and the other leaders of the people, pointing to Jesus and saying that he was no good. They had to stand up for him to people that didn't quite believe in him. So they felt that they had left behind or they were giving up a lot for this rabbi that was their, their guide, their, their very inspiration. And so he, he understood their, their, their feeling, their thinking, and he said, don't worry. Whatever you've, you've given up, you're going to be repaid uh, many, many times over what, what you have given up yourselves. And, and certainly, if we believe in eternal life, which is part of our faith, we certainly believe that those early disciples of Jesus that had given up things for him uh, were rewarded with the goodness of heaven. And we also pray, hope and pray that we who let go and give up certain things in our lives uh, will be rewarded by God. Uh, we give things up not because we want to be rewarded, but because it brings us closer to God. So tomorrow we'll start a very, very special time when whatever we've given up will be important to think about and to pray about. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, let us pray. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our shepherd, Cardinal Dolan, that God bless them and guide them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the church throughout the world during this difficult time of scandal and crises and all sorts of things that are happening that somehow the church may be cleansed and cleaned and come back with a better health, we pray to the Lord. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, to religious life, to the diaconate, and to lay leadership in our Catholic Church, that God may inspire generous and happy men and women to serve him and his people, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have been sexually abused or harassed or violated, that the loving and powerful hand of God may come into their lives and heal them, we pray to the Lord. We, and in the silence of our own hearts, we ask the Lord for whatever special need that we have today. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, our God, we ask you to listen to our prayers. We bring them to you in the name of Jesus, our brother and savior, who is with you as God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands who will become our spiritual drink. My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be 
offered in your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion. We ask of your mercy that what you grant us as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things. When you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Edward, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 807 in your one faith hymnal, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 807. sing to you our praise 
gifts and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ outpoured? Do not one cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the breath of life to Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Don't forget, tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. We're going to have probably about 50,000 people here, so it might be a little more or a lot more crowded than usual. Uh, the Mass will be the same. All of our Masses are the same. But the ashes will be given out after Mass or all during the day uh, tomorrow. Have a great day. Our recessional hymn is number 591, Blessed by Your Sacrifice, number 591. Blessed by Your Sacrifice, strong in Your love, O Christ, our grateful voices to You we raise. out in joy.